Welcome to part two of our series on sail trim. In our video last year, we looked at mainsail trim, how to trim the big main on your boat to go faster, to be more efficient, and to get to your destination a little bit sooner. Today, we are gonna look at foresail trim. So whether you've got a jib or a Genoa, this will enable you to sail faster. Now, a quick word of warning here. If you are part of America's Cup team, if you are an expert sailor, this will be far too basic for you. However, for the hundreds of you that talk to us and email and message us about sail trim, as you start your journey in the world of sailing, this should be super useful. And if you do find it useful, and if you did find it useful, leave us a comment down below. We have lots more technical videos coming out of both Monohull and moving on to Ruby Rose 2, our Catamaran sailing. So leave a comment down below, and you know what? Subscribe to the channel if you feel that that's something you want to do, and enjoy this video. Now, before we dive into foresail trim, let's deal with some basics and some terminology. The leech is the trailing aft edge of the sail. This is the thing that seems to flutter if you've got it set wrong. The luff is the forward edge of the sail that goes between the deck and the top of the mast, with the foot being the lower edge of the sail. The three corners of the sail are the clue which attaches to the sheet, the head which attaches to the top of the mast, and the tack which attaches to the deck and the furling gear. And I also want to draw your attention to the telltales on your foresail. These will allow you to gauge whether your sail is set properly and tell you what to adjust. Now, unlike the mainsail, there are only four ways of trimming the foresail. And we're gonna start with the backstay. Now, if your boat has a backstay, and not all boats do, and catamarans don't, it can be adjusted and tensioned to change the rake of the mast. Now, how does this work in real terms? On Ruby Rose, we had a winching point, and that would allow small increments of change. So by adjusting the backstay tension according to the point of sail and the wind direction, we can tighten or loosen the forestay. This leads to a tighter head sail, and a tighter head sail leads to a flatter, lower drag sail. This is best for flat waters, upwind sailing, and stronger winds. Contrarily, by loosening the forestay, you get a fuller head sail. This gives a more powerful shape, which is ideal for lighter winds, and downwind sailing in bigger seas. Now, as the wind strength increases, the forestay will sag more because the wind is putting more pressure on it. So increasing your backstay tension as the wind strengthens will give a better sail shape. And as the wind lightens, decrease the tension a little bit. Now let's look at Genoa cars. Now on boats with overlapping head sails, these tend to run along the side decks and can be moved forward and backwards. And this movement allows changing of the sheeting angle. Now, for those of you with self-tacking head sails, the Genoa cars are replaced by a multi-point clue board. And so changing the position of the sheet on the clue board changes your sheeting angle. Now, when we discuss sheeting angle, what we are discussing is the angle that the sheet makes through the Genoa cars with respect to the deck. Now, as a rule of thumb, if you are trying to find a start point for what sheeting angle you're going to require, about 40% of the way up the luff. So if you run an imaginary line from the deck through the clue, it should extend to about 40% of the way up the luff. But why is sheeting angle so important? Well, by altering the sheeting angle, we can change the balance between the tension that we put in the leech of the sail and the tension that we put in the foot of the sail. And to understand why this is important, we need to understand sail twist. When I started sailing, understanding the need for sail twist was something that took me a long while to understand. Firstly, by definition, head sail twist is a difference in trim between the top and the bottom of the sail. A simple explanation for the need for sail twist is because the wind nearer the water has to deal with the friction it encounters as it passes over the water. This slows it down and so wind nearer the water is generally lighter than wind higher up. Now when we are sailing we tend to work with apparent wind. Now a higher true wind speed results in a higher apparent wind speed and a wider apparent wind angle. And those lower true wind speeds nearer the water create a lower apparent wind speed and a narrower apparent wind angle. 
So when we are sailing, the wind angle and the wind speed at the top of the sail is different to the wind angle and wind speed at the bottom of the sail. And for this reason, the sail needs to have different shapes at the top and at the bottom, hence the need for sail twist. Now in basic terms, if you move your Genoa car forward, it will make your sail fuller and decreases the sail twist. If you move your car aft, it will flatten the sail and it increases the sail twist. So move your Genoa cars forward in lighter winds and with calmer water and move them aft in stronger winds and in rougher seas. However, we will deal with this in more detail later on in this episode. Now the next way of changing your sail shape is sheeting. Sheeting the sail in or easing it out. And this is the easy one. A sheeted in sail decreases the twist, decreases the drive, but enables you to point higher. Easing the sheet creates the opposite effect. When you ease the sheet, you increase the twist in the sail. You increase the drive, but you lose pointing ability. So you sheet in to go upwind and you ease the sheet when you are downwind. Now I want to talk a little bit about halyard tension. It is one method of four sail trim that people tend to avoid because they think it's complicated. But by increasing the tension, you bring your draft forward, it opens the leech and it generates lift. Now what do I mean by that? Now for upwind efficient sailing, your four sail should be shaped like an aeroplane wing. It should create an aerofoil effect and that should allow air and wind to pass smoothly across it. Now to get this air to pass smoothly across your sail, you want the point of maximum draft to be at about 40% between the tack and the clue. When this occurs, air will pass smoothly across the trailing edge of the sail and you create drive, which is exactly what you want when you're sailing upwind. Now reducing your halyard tension or moving your Genoa cars too far forward moves the draft of the sail back. This means that in stronger winds, the airflow doesn't stick to the sail. It doesn't create drive and instead vortexes off, which means that you lose lift and that's not what you want when you are sailing upwind. So regarding halyard tension, when you are sailing upwind in stronger winds, increase the tension. In lighter winds, less tension is required. So I've given you a lot of information about exactly how to trim your sail, but how do you know if what you're doing is working? Well, believe it or not, you do not need any fancy electronics. You don't need anything expensive at all. You just need a good set of telltales. Now telltales, well, they are normally bits of wool that are stuck onto the sail. A good foresail should have three sets, one at the top of the sail, one in the middle of the sail, and one at the bottom of the sail. And they come in pairs, so you'll have one on the port side of the sail, and one on the starboard side of the sail, and normally they're red and green to correspond with the port and the starboard sides. Now when your foresail is set correctly, you will find that the port and starboard telltales are all three levels are all flying completely horizontally. So they are flying backwards away from the front of the boat. And that means, well done, you've got that sail set perfectly. However, they will all change position and these little markers will tell you exactly what and how to adjust your sail. So let's look at four different scenarios. Scenario one, in this scenario, your lured telltales are stalled. They are, they are hanging down, they're not flying. This means that essentially you're sheeting in far too hard. Now, if all those telltales are stalled, you just need to ease the sheet. That's a simple one. So lured telltales stalled, ease the sheet. Now in scenario two, we have exactly the opposite. In this scenario, all the telltales on the windward side are lifting. In this case, you have got the sail in, it's too loose. You just need to sheet in a little bit. So when your windward telltales are lifting, sheet in. Scenario three, in this scenario, it is just the upper telltales on the windward side of the sail that are lifting. Now this essentially means that there's, the sail is too open, there's too much twist. In this case, you need to move your Genoa cars forward. Do this and you should find that the telltales settle down. Okay. 
Now, scenario four is the opposite of scenario three. In this one, the lured lower telltales are stalled. They're not flying correctly. This means that the lower part of the sail is too deep. You need, in this case, to move those Genoa cars back. Do this and you should see your telltales start to fly correctly again. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was part two of our series on sail trim. Go out, sail your boat, sail your friend's boat, and then let us know if it made a difference. Obviously, each sail is different between those small blade jibs and those massive overlapping generals. You have to understand the, the differences between a general boat and your boat. Also, catamarans and monohulls will sail differently because you don't have a backstay in a catamaran. But we hope that you did find this useful. Please leave us a comment down below, give us a like and a thumbs up, and we will be back as always with more Technical Tuesday episodes, as well as our general lifestyle vlogs and our sailing vlogs as we move from Ruby Rose 1 onto Ruby Rose 2. So I hope you enjoyed that. I will see you all again. Take care, goodbye.